Hello again, Mission Control. Well, we're here today and we're gonna to talk about fish. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So one of the key parts of aquaponics is fish. Without the fish, you don't get the waste. Without the waste, you don't get the microbes. Without the microbes, you don't get the nutrients that the plants need. Without the plants, you don't eat. So we had a lot of thinking to do when it came to fish, specifically what type of fish we wanted to go with and what one fit our environment. Now, if you're familiar with aquaponics, you know that tilapia, catfish, these are pretty popular types of fish, but we actually chose to go with rainbow trout. Now, the reason we chose to go with rainbow trout is because we live in a place where it's cold. Average temperature in the wintertime is below freezing. So when we chose rainbow trout, it was purely because we could keep the water cooler a lot easier uh, than warming it. If I could do warm water, I'd want to do freshwater prawns. Yeah, if I really could, freshwater prawns would be the way that I really want to go because I love prawns. Uh, but you need a lot warmer water, and since we do live in the northern hemisphere and up fairly high in latitude, we wanted to go with something that could handle the cold, so rainbow trout. You could have went with other things, but another reason we chose rainbow trout is they're delicious. Now, the challenge with rainbows is that they're carnivorous. They need to eat protein uh, in order to survive. You can't just have them eating uh, like a goldfish would eat algae or whatever. Um, so fish food is something we'll talk about uh, next time. Uh, so I'm going to kind of delay that conversation for now, but uh, you do need to get a good quality fish food for them and that's something that will, again, is a challenge and we'll talk about that in the future. But the trout are awesome. They're really healthy. They taste great. Um, we started off with about 300 trout that we got from a fish farm and uh, they came, they delivered them to us and we put them in here and through a series of mistakes and bad system design, uh, many of the little small guys uh, got sucked up into the pump. Uh, it's horrible. Uh, but they say you're not really doing aquaponics until you kill a few fish. So I guess that qualifies us now. Um, but we love them. The fish are great. Like I said, they taste good. They're really healthy. We got some big ones, like 16 inchers in there. Uh, that were supposed to be brood stock. We haven't got them to breed yet. We haven't even tried. That'll be a future challenge that we talk about. Um, but they're great. Um, the, the, let's talk about the fish tanks themselves here real quick. So I'm standing uh, in between lane one and lane two. And you can see here, we got the rock here that we're standing on and we got some kickboards. Uh, you, if you do it this way, uh, the benefit of putting your fish tanks in the ground has to do with thermodynamics. Uh, as well as space, so twofold, thermo and space. So we want to make one square foot of land worth two. If you do normal aquaponics like you see other people do, Nelson and Page, for example, they're great. They have a long history, way more than us. Um, but they would have their tanks above ground and using gravity and all that type of stuff. But the challenge for us, why we don't like that solution, is it ends up taking up valuable grow space. That breaks our requirement. So. We want it, that's one reason we put them down in the ground and then we have to use a pump to get everything up. Now that comes with challenges and we'll talk about those in the future. But the second reason uh, that we put it in the ground, probably even more important, is thermodynamics. By putting the tanks down into the ground, we expose a lot of surface area to earth, just earth, dirt. Uh, and that earth, uh, when you get deep enough, these tanks are three feet deep. So they're two feet wide by three feet deep. So what's that? That's like a little over a meter and a half, uh, half a meter uh, by a meter deep, yep. Uh, and then they are 60 feet long. Uh, so lots of space for the fish to swim around in and you could technically you know, expand. All you gotta do is dig another trench and put another thing in, so very scalable. But you have all that surface area down there where heat transfer can occur. So in the winter time, you get heat transfer in from the earth because the earth is normally 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a nice warm temperature down there. And then in the summer, you get heat transfer out, where as the water comes up, it warms up as it goes through the grow bed, and then it, it hits the fish tank, and then it cools down as that heat goes into the ground. So this keeps your fish a lot more stable as far as their temperature goes. All right, another reason. So let, let's think Mars again. Uh, how does thinking about Mars help us in this particular situation? Well, you think about Mars, I think about like protein. And how am I going to get it there? You have a lot of different plant-based proteins that uh, you can have. Soy, for a good example. Um, but your diet, if you think about it, do you just want to be eating soy all the time? That's one problem. Two, 
are you going to get the fertilizer for to grow your food? Is it okay to use human waste like they did in the Martian? Let me think about that. How many medications or pills do you take? Each of those medications and pills that you would be on, they don't fully digest in your body. You're adding a foreign chemical. Now, no matter what we want to say, we are what we eat, and those chemicals get into us, whether they're good or bad, it doesn't matter. They're chemicals. So if you were to use your waste to grow your food, you're essentially just, and, and you're taking foreign objects like pills, whether they're for good reasons or not, eventually you're building up that chemical over and over and over again. It's just getting more and more potent uh, in your waste, and you're putting that on your food, and you're eating it, and then you're excreting, and then you're re-eating it. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a bad idea. So you're going to need fertilizer from somewhere. And if you're on Mars, you're going to have to truck it all in. And trucking it in takes nine months and a lot of money. You're talking about a million dollars a pound in order to launch something into space. So how can we easily transport a renewable, sustainable fertilizer source that doesn't have a lot of disease and isn't filled with a bunch of different chemicals? How about fish? <laughs> fish, one hen. So you have, um, the, the girls are called hens, and uh, they can have anywhere from 300 to 1,000 eggs per year, per uh, cycle of laying. That is sustainable. Easily transportable. Can be kept very cold, and then when they need to come out, they can, well, depending on what species, uh, they can be grown, so you can transport very easily. Now, how does this help us here on Earth? Same thing. You, you, can't, you need fertilizer. You need those nutrients from somewhere. Um, you need something easily transportable. You need something that's not filled with chemicals. And a cool thing about fish, they're cold-blooded. A lot less disease potential, uh, pathways, I should say, for pathogens, a lot less chance than warm-blooded. Warm uh, e. coli, salmonella, all that, <laughs> gone because it's cold-blooded. So it's a lot easier uh, to keep your pathogens, uh, your pathways lower with fish. So again, we're not trying to go to Mars, though it would be cool. Uh, but thinking about Mars, thinking about a place that is so isolated that you have to bring in everything with you and pack it all out with you really helps us design a better system. So that's how thinking about Mars helps us with aquaponics. So there you have it. Fish are a great way to bring in fertilizer into your system to help your plants to where you don't have to buy or make or, or use something that's not really sustainable in order to grow the food that you need to eat. Another good thing about it, they taste great. So uh, we cooked up the rainbow trout, had a, a great meal with them uh, this last summer in 2017 and they came out really, really good. So we're really happy about that. This year we think we're gonna be adding more fish to the system. We actually think our density is a little too low right now to really be getting the benefit out of it. So um, we'll talk about that more in a future episode. I hope you did enjoy this episode. I hope it was informational for you, educational for you, and uh, look forward to seeing you on future episodes. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget that you could also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian.